Okay, so today we're talking about energy flow. This is for the grade 9 class. We have several questions to ask on, uh, to answer on the energy flow handout. And it comes from the uh, textbook Unit 1, Sustainable Ecosystems and Human Activity. So uh, the first question is, what happens to the sun's energy in photosynthetic plants? Answer that question is the sun's energy is captured by photosynthetic pigments like chlorophyll and it is used to make glucose from carbon dioxide and water. So the plants capture the carbon dioxide from the air, they get water from the roots, they draw it out of the soil, and they combine those two chemicals to make glucose, they make sugars, they make simple sugars which are then uh, combined to form different things like starch or cellulose or uh, lignin in the case of trees. The second question is, what living things use photosynthesis to make foods? The class of organisms known as producers, which includes all green plants and algae. Algae are little one-celled organisms that can grow in the water. Uh, when, the water turn, when the surface of water turns green, it's due to algae. Algae are producers because they capture carbon dioxide from the air and they turn it into uh, their, their cells. Also the plants. Any plant that has chlorophyll, any green plant, will capture, is able to capture sunlight energy and turn it into uh, growth. Third question is, what other forms of energy are produced from the chemical energy used during cellular respiration? Well, there are two things that are produced. A cellular, a cellular respiration produces work and heat. So the, the work is in the form of muscular movement, and in the case of the human body, it's uh, maintaining the body temperature at 37 degrees Celsius, or when our muscles work, they produce heat. So some of the energy goes into growing, some of the energy, a lot of the energy goes into form of heat. Question four, which living things use cellular respiration to release stored energy? The answer to that is that all living things use cellular respiration. Even plants use cellular respiration at night, because when there's no sunlight, the cells are still living, they're still um, using energy to continue living and doing their life processes. And of course, producers um, produce energy during the day in the form using photosynthetic pigments and the sun's light. And consumers, uh, they get their energy by consuming other organisms. How do producers make their food? Uh, they use the following chemical process. By producers, we mean anything that is photosynthetic. They use carbon dioxide plus water to form glucose, and the byproduct is oxygen. That's why plants help replenish the atmosphere by producing oxygen. How do animals get energy that they need to live? Uh, they must eat. They must eat producers. So if they do, they're called herbivores. Other consumers, if they do that, they're called carnivores because they eat flesh. Or both, if they eat both herbivores and uh, rather, if they eat both plants and other animals, then they're omnivores, meaning they eat everything. Qu seventh question is, how does the flow of energy move through a food chain? And the answer is that only a small amount of energy is transferred to the next trophic level. The original food energy is used for growth, and some is lost in the form of heat. In photosynthetic organisms, a large amount of a large amount of energy is used to make big molecules out of the smaller ones. The eighth question, give an example of how the change of one organism in a food chain could affect an entire food web. And the answer is if one organism were, were to change significantly in a population, it could strain the other organisms that depend on it to eat. So say, for example, if frogs disappear, then the snakes would have less to eat, and grasshopper populations would tend to increase. The last question is, what percentage of food energy is transferred between a producer and a consumer, and the answer to that is roughly 10%. Only 10% of food energy from a producer is passed on to a consumer, and only about 10% is passed from consumer to consumer.